Greetings viewers and welcome to an all new episode of the OER Live Leader Speak. Today we have with us somebody really special, Mr. Istvan Kapitani, the Global Executive Vice President of Shell. Within his capacity at the company, he oversees a network of over 46,000 retail outlets in nearly 80 countries. This is brought to life by nearly half a million frontline service champions that serve 30 million customers daily. That's right, daily. This makes Shell the number one mobility retailer in the world, selling over 200 billion liters of fuel annually. Without further ado, let's jump into the interview. So, Mr. Istvan Kapitani, first and foremost, welcome to OER Live Leader Speak. Lovely to be here. Thanks very much for the invitation. So, 200 billion liters of fuel annually. <laughs> yes. Access and operations in over 80 countries. That's yeah. quite a portfolio. What mm-hmm. can you tell us about the future of mobility globally and how it corresponds to Oman? The future of mobility is changing uh, rapidly as as we go through energy transition now there are more and more choices uh, i believe there will be and to an extent there are now for customers to pick from from different parts of the world so from traditional internal combustion engines to uh, battery electric vehicles to fuel cell vehicles even uh, battery electric bikes where you're swapping uh, the battery and you are not charging even in uh, China you now see even with cars you know neo is uh, not charging the batteries but swapping the batteries so very very different ways of uh, uh, basically doing mobility because the customer needs are changing with the energy transition with the need to reduce uh, the carbon that is emitted Uh, more and more technical solutions and also customer oriented solutions are coming out and because we are in 80 countries and we are really customer centric we watching how the customers are are reacting our job my job which is a great job to offer choices to customers so if they want to drive an ev car our job to have an electric vehicle charging network which we are building the commitment is that we will have uh, half a million electric vehicle chargers by 2025 we already have 90000 and we just started uh, this ball rolling we also seeing a huge change in the customer habits in convenience retailing because uh, they want more and more from uh, mobility outlets and with electric vehicle charging we experience now in china in the netherlands in the uk they spend 15 17 minutes on our sites so they drink far more coffee they have far more food and we need to give them a significantly better service uh, in our stores so Shell is very well positioned because we are in 80 countries and we learn from each other. And the way to go about it is to offer customers for example home charging, office charging, on the go charging. So you need to be and by the way from slow charging to ultra powerful charging 350 kilowatt hours. And Shell has the capability engineering wise, network planning wise, sales wise, marketing wise to do that in different scales in different countries. So it's a rapidly changing environment, uh, a very very exciting one because uh, the jury is still out. For example, fuel cell cars are still there. You know, it could be that uh, they would be accelerating in the second half of the 20s. Uh, who knows? We certainly are prepared for that as well. Um, so the job I have is to provide customers with choices. Absolutely. Now you spoke about customer centricity, but is it a case of uh, you know Shell themselves have been converting a lot of fuel stations to also EV stations. So is there a case of you telling what the customers want or is it you reaching out to their needs? It's very interesting. It's a very good question. So we opened up uh, 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 a full EV hub in London. We actually um, knocked down an existing service station in the city uh, in, in Fulham and we built it back to an EV charging station with 10 Uh, EV chargers 175 kilowatt hour and with that you create demand so it's a very good question you ask because what happens with that we heard it back no no I will buy an EV car because I have the proper facilities to actually charge my car the biggest it's a chicken and egg so if if customers like the car but uh, charging is cumbersome they might not buy the car so you are also driving in, indeed as you say the demand not only does the customer says that I need that but you also need to be driving it Luckily at the end of the day the customer will only change in big numbers uh, uh, their purchasing habits if it is something which is good for them it's uh, frictionless it's easy to fill up the car 
and they love the car. And with EV cars, to be entirely honest, the cars are already fantastic. The issue is the, the infrastructure is lacking, and that's what we are trying to bring. There was a time, let's say 50, 70 years ago, when oil was considered to be black gold. Yes. Now you have been with Shell for a while, and yeah. you have been transforming the company, and yeah. been along with the transformation process in itself. Where do you see the vision of Shell going in the future? Well, there is, uh, there is clear that uh, Shell is committed to the energy transition and our role is uh, obviously to do things about it, to help an energy transition as smoothly as possible, uh, to provide more and cleaner energy to, uh, to customers all around the world in the 80 countries. And we believe that it will be leading, of course, to, uh, to a mobility which will be without carbon emission. Uh, and luckily we are very well positioned to offer different kind of solutions to customers already today, but hopefully we're going to get better in this. What do I mean? EV charging we talked about, fuel cells, hydrogen we talked about, increasing biofuels uh, production. We are one of the biggest biofuels producers in the world. We are the only one who is producing second generation biofuels, which is the non-eatable part of the sugar cane. We're working on uh, uh, sustainable fuels, for example, working with Ferrari and the Penske racing team to produce 100% sustainable fuels, because that could be also an option as a, as a liquid option for reducing carbon emission. Because we, we do not believe that just one size fits all, because if you operate in 80 countries, you see that there are different kinds of solutions. Brazil is a good example. In Brazil, 57% of the petrol sales, uh, petrol cars, are going with ethanol. So can you imagine, this is 57% already. Now, people say, okay, it's possible in, in, in Brazil, not possible elsewhere. We need to see how to make this possible. Because the, the world needs more than just one uh, solution. Clearly, the biggest opportunity we also saw, uh, see in EV charging, and that's the reason why we have this ambition that by 2030, we will have two and a half million EV chargers in the world in share colors. And with that, we will be the number one uh, e-mobility company, not only just the number one mobility company. Wonderful. Now, with your permission, I'll make this my last question. What are some of the projects that we're looking at in Oman that we invest in? So we, we're going to be going ahead of the curve a little bit on EV because we see that this is not uh, uh, the place where it is happening right now but it might come and we want to make sure that our team really learns how to do this well. The other is hydrogen, because there are uh, intentions for uh, uh, commercial or transport usage uh, for, for fuel cell or hydrogen. And we're very happy to participate in that, both in terms of production, but also in terms of uh, the service station part of that, because that is what we can uh, bring, bring, to the, uh, bring to the Omani market. Um, and clearly, you know, our convenience retail business, we will be developing all the different kind of products and services that you see all around the world. So these are the questions we have for you. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Swan Kapitani, and we hope you have a very pleasant stay here. No, I, I really enjoy to be in Oman and I enjoy the hospitality of the Omani people. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.